Hey, Shalom, Israel, Most High in Christ, bless. Uh, my name is Captain Mattathias. To my right, Officer Jediah. Officer Joshua. And today, um, we're doing 15 minutes with the captain. So, the topic today is, did Christ keep the law? All right, we're not going to waste any time. Read what you got. This is the book of Matthew, chapter 9 and verse 20. Come on. And behold, a woman which was diseased with an issue of blood 12 years came behind him and touched the hem of his garment. And did what? Touched the hem of his garment. All right, we're going to read from the Zondervan Compact Bible Dictionary. Let's get some understanding of what hem means. This is the Compact Bible Dictionary. Hem of a garment. Fringes. What? Fringes. Come on. Or tassels. So it says the definition of him is equivalent to what? Fringes or tassels on the borders of the Jewish outer garment. All right. From there, give me Mark chapter 6 and verse 56. The book of Mark chapter 6, verse 56. Come on. And whithersoever he entered into villages or cities or country, they laid the sick in the streets. Come on. And besought him that they might touch it if it were but the border of his garment. But the what? But the border of his garment. Come on. And as many as touched him were made whole. So let's find out why would Jesus Christ have fringes and a border on his garment? Why would he have that? Give me the book of Numbers 15, 38. Come the on. The book of Numbers chapter 15 and verse 38. Uh -huh. Speak unto the children of Israel. To who? To the children of Israel. Was Christ an Israelite? Yes, he was from the tribe of Judah. Read. And bid them that they make them fringes in the borders of their garments. That they make what? Fringes in the borders of their garments. So what is the Christian church talking about that the laws are done away with once Christ came on the scene? That's not in the Bible, okay? From there, let's go to the book of Mark, chapter 14 and verse 12. Mark, chapter 14, verse 12. Come on. And the first day of unleavened bread, when they killed the Passover. When they did what? When they killed the Passover, Come on. his disciples said unto him, Where wilt thou that we go and prepare that thou mayest eat the Passover? So let's get an understanding to see if there's a, a separation or a difference between the uh, Feast of Love, uh, Love and Bread, excuse me, and the Passover. Read what you got. The book of Luke, chapter 22 and verse 1. Come on. Now the Feast of Unleavened Bread drew not. Which is called the Passover. Which is called what? The Passover. So when it comes to the Feast of Unleavened Bread and the Passover, they're interchangeable, meaning they're the same thing. Let's go back to Mark 14. We're going to read a little bit. Mark chapter 14, verse 12. Come on. And the first day of unleavened bread, when they killed the Passover, uh -huh. his disciples said unto him, where wilt thou that we go and prepare that thou mayest eat the Passover? So they said to Christ, where are we going to eat the Passover at? Meaning what? We are getting ready to keep the feast. Come on. And he sent forth two of his disciples and saith unto them, Go ye into the city, and there shall meet you a man bearing a pitcher of water. Mm -hmm. Follow him. And wheresoever he shall go in, say ye to the good man of the house. The master saith, where is the guest chamber? The guest chamber. Where is the guest chamber where I shall eat the Passover with my disciples? Where he should do what? Where I shall eat the Passover with my disciples. And who said that? Jesus the Christ. All right. He said, where should I eat the Passover with my disciples? Read on. And he will show you a large upper room, furnished and prepared. There make ready for us. And his disciples went forth and came into the city and found as he had said unto them, and they made ready the Passover. Uh -huh. And in the evening, he cometh with the twelve. Come on. And as they sat and did eat, Jesus said, Verily I say unto you, One of you which eateth with me shall betray me. So what's the point? Christ and the twelve actually sat down to do what? To eat the Passover meal. Meaning what? Christ kept the Feast of Unleavened Bread or the Passover. All right? Give me that next scripture. This is the book of Leviticus, chapter 23 and verse 5. Come on. In the 14th day of the first month, and even is the Lord's Passover. Is the what? The Lord's Passover. So we're reading from where? The law. The law. We're reading that what? That we are to keep the Passover in the 14th day of the first month. And where did we read that? We read it in the New Testament by who? Our Lord and Savior, Jesus the Christ, doing the exact same thing. Now, from there, let's go to the book of John. Chapter 7, we'll start at verse 1. The book of John, chapter 7 and verse 1. Come on. After these things, Jesus walked in Galilee, 
For we, for he would not walk in Drury because the Jews sought to kill him. The Jews did what? Sought to kill him. Why? Because Christ spake openly. He spoke, spoke of the law. The Pharisees, the chiefs, priests, and the elders wanted to kill Christ because he put them into open shame. All right, read on. Now the Jews' feast of tabernacles. Now the what? The Jews' feast of tabernacles. That is a law of God. Read. Was at hand. Come on. His brethren therefore said unto him, Depart hence and go unto Judea. Come on. That thy disciples also may see the works that thou doest. Uh huh. For there is no man that doeth anything in secret. Read. And he himself seeketh to be known openly. If thou doest these things, show thyself to the world. Read. For neither did his brethren believe in him. Come on. Then Jesus said unto them, My time is not yet come, for your time is always ready. Uh huh. The world cannot hate you, but me it hated. Because I testify of it that the works thereof are evil. So he's saying it's not good for me to go do this openly. All right. I have to do this strategically because it's not my time to be taken yet. Read. Go ye up unto this feast. I go not up yet unto this feast. For my time is not yet full. Come. All right. So when you go, I can't come with you because I know if I go with you at this time, they're going to take me. All right. And put me to death. Read. When he had said these words unto them, they abode still in Galilee. He abode still in Galilee. Read it again. When he had said these words unto them, he abode still in Galilee. Meaning what? He stayed back while the disciples went forth to keep the feast. Read. But when his brethren were gone up, then went he also up into the feast. So he waited and then did what? Then he went up to the feast because he knew what would be waiting on him. Read. Not openly, but as it were in secret. So he didn't do this as an open spectacle. He's not walking around uh, Judea with the twelve in the open. He did it in secret. Read. Then the Jews sought him at the feast and said, where is he? And then the Jews started talking amongst themselves. It's like, where's the king? Or where's this guy that calls himself the Christ? Where's he at? Now, I want you to see something. Our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, his life was in danger. Okay? He could have been killed at any moment, but he still made a way to keep the feast. Meaning what? Christ still kept the law no matter of what the circumstance was. All right? Read on. Verse 12. And there was much murmuring among the people concerning him. Come on. For, for some said... He is a good man. Some say he's a good man. Come on. Others say, nay, but he deceiveth the people. But he deceiveth the people. I digress real quick. I just want to bring out a quick point. Give me John 7 and 43. Because in today, what you see in the nation of Israel, you see a lot of backlash against one particular camp. Let's see if Christ was doing the same thing. A lot of people say this particular camp got the devil on them. And some people say, there's no way this camp has a devil on them. Because look at the works that they're doing. Read what you got. The book of John, chapter 7, verse 43. Come on. So there was a division. There was a what? There was a division Come on. among the people. Among the people. And who are those people? They were Israelites. Read. Because of him. Because of him. Who's the him? Jesus the Christ. So don't be surprised when you see a division amongst the nations. Some saying they're the devil. But some saying that there's no way that the devil look at their works. There's always going to be a division when you're following after Christ. Right. Now, let's go back to verse 12. The book of John, chapter 7 and verse 12. Come on. And there was much murmuring among the people concerning him. Uh -huh. But some said, he is a good man. Others say, nay, but he deceiveth the people. Read. How be it? No man spake openly of him for fear of the Jews. For fear of the Jews. Read. Now, about the midst of the feast, Jesus went up into the temple and taught. And the Jews marveled, saying, how knoweth this man letters have he never heard? So they say, how does he know the Bible? How can he teach like that? Never being learned, meaning what? He didn't go, he didn't, um, he wasn't taught by Gamaliel. He wasn't in the sect of the Pharisees or the scribes. Right. He was just born with that gift. So that, that marvel, how is he able to teach like that? Now, that's another topic. Give me verse 37. Verse 37. Come on. And the last day, that great day of the feast. So showing you what? He didn't just keep one day of the Feast of Tabernacle. He kept all of the days of the feast. Come on. Jesus stood and cried, saying, If any man thirst, let him come unto me. Let him do what? Come unto me and drink. All right, from there. Give me Leviticus 23 and 34. Leviticus 23 and verse 34. 
The book of Leviticus, chapter 23, verse 34. Come on. Speak unto the children of Israel, saying, The fifteenth day of this seventh month shall be the Feast of Tabernacles. The Feast of what? The Feast of Tabernacles. Come on. For seven days unto the Lord. For how many? For seven days unto the Lord. And we see that Christ kept all seven days. All right? From there, let's go to the book of um, Acts uh, 27 and 9. The book of Acts, chapter 27 and verse 9. Come on. Now when much time was spent, and when sailing was now dangerous, because the fast was now already passed. Because the what? Because the fast was now already passed. Read. Paul admonished them. them. Now, what fast is Paul talking about right here? He says, the fast. So we got to get an understanding of what fast he's talking about. Give me Leviticus 23 and 27. The book of Leviticus, chapter 23 and verse 27. Come on. Also, on the tenth day of this seventh month, there shall be a day of atonement. There shall be a what? A day of atonement. Come on. It shall be an holy convocation uh -huh. unto you. Read. And ye shall afflict your soul. You shall what? Afflict your soul. So now we need to find out what it means to afflict your soul. All right? Give me the book of Isaiah, chapter 58 and verse 3. The book of Isaiah, chapter 58 and verse 3. Come on. Wherefore have we fasted? Have we what? Have we fasted? Read. Say they, and thou seest not. Wherefore have we afflicted our soul? Have we what? Afflicted our soul. Meaning what? When you afflict your soul, that means to fast. And this particular fast is going into what? The day of atonement. So you ask the question, bro, that didn't say Christ. That said Paul. All right. Give me 1 Corinthians, the 11th chapter in the first verse. 1 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 1. Come on. Be ye followers of me. Paul says, be ye followers of me. Even as I also am of Christ. Even as I also am of Christ. All right, so guess what? Give me 1 Peter 2, 21. Because Paul had to learn that from Christ in some form, some fashion. All right, read what you got. The book of 1 Peter chapter 2 and verse 21. Come on. For even here unto were ye called, because Christ also suffered for us. Leaving us an example. Leaving us what? An example. So Paul, you have to realize, Paul walked the earth when Christ was alive. You have to understand that. The testimony of Jesus Christ was spread through all the world. So guess what? Paul said he was a follower of Christ, knowing what? Christ had to keep the day of atonement. Read, but you read it again. The book of 1 Peter, chapter 2 and verse 20, 21. Come on. For even here unto were ye called. Because Christ also suffered for us, See? leading us an example. An example. An example is for something, is something for us to follow after. Now, drop that. Give me the book of John, chapter 10, and verse 22. All right? Remember, today's topic is did Christ keep the law? So we're going to examples in the Holy Scriptures to prove just that. Read what you got. John chapter 10, verse 22. Come on. And it was at Jerusalem. The feast of the dedication. The feast of what? Of the dedication. And it was winter. And it was what? It was winter. Now, give me the book of 1 Maccabees in the Apocrypha. All right, so it's telling you when this particular feast would be or what uh, season it would be around. It said, and it was winter. All right? Now, dedication is another word for Hanukkah. Hanukkah is the Hebrew term for dedication. It means to dedicate. Right. All right, read that. This is the book of 1 Maccabees, chapter 4 and verse 36. Come on. Then said Judas and his brethren, Behold, our enemies are discomfited. Let us go up to cleanse and dedicate the sanctuary. Let us do what? Go up to cleanse and dedicate the sanctuary. So our forefather, Judas Maccabeus, said, You know what? Let's overcome our enemies, the Grecians at this time, and rededicate the temple. All right? That was the prophecy in Daniel, the eighth chapter, coming to pass. All right, read that again. The book of 1 Maccabees, chapter 4, verse 36. Come on. Then said Judas and his brethren, Behold, our enemies are discomfited. Let us go up to cleanse and dedicate the sanctuary. Drop that. Give me 2 Maccabees, chapter 1, verse 18. The book of 2 Maccabees, chapter 1, verse 18. Come on. Therefore, whereas we are now proposed to keep the purification of the temple. So another name for dedication is the purification of the temple. Come on. Upon the five and twentieth day of the month cast loop, uh -huh. we thought it necessary to certify you thereof, that ye also might keep it 
as the feast of the tabernacles. So as the feast of the tabernacles, we understand it's not just one day, it's not just two, it's seven days. You understand? So we keep the feast of dedication the same way. From there, give me the book of Deuteronomy, chapter 32 and verse 4. The book of Deuteronomy, chapter 32 and verse 4. Come on. He is the rock. He is the what? He is the rock. Read. His work is perfect. Come on. For all his ways are judgment. So it says he is the rock and his work is perfect. Perfection, according to the Bible, is to do what? Keep God's commandments according to 1 Kings chapter 8, verse 61. Read on. A God of truth uh -huh. and without iniquity. And without what? And without iniquity. And according to Psalms 38 and 18, iniquity is sin. So it right. says that the rock is without sin. Come on. Just and right is he. Just and right is he. The book of Deuteronomy chapter 32 and verse 4. Come on. He is the rock. His work is perfect. Uh -huh. For all his ways are judgment. Read. A God of truth. And without iniquity, uh -huh. just and right is he. Just and right is he. Now give me that in Corinthians chapter 10, verse 4. First Corinthians chapter 10, verse 4. Come on. And did all drink the same spiritual drink. Come on. For they drank of that spiritual rock uh -huh. that followed them, and that rock was Christ. And that what? That rock was Christ. So what? That rock kept the commandments. That rock, our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, kept the law. Last scripture, John 5 and 30. The book of John, chapter 5 and verse 30. Come on. I can't of my own self do nothing. Christ says he can of his own self do nothing. Read. As I hear, I judge. Come on. And my judgment is just. Read. Because I seek not my own will. Christ did not come on the earth to do his own thing. Read. But the will of the Father, which hath sent me. Which hath what? Which hath sent me. So according to Psalms 40 and 8, the will of God is to do what? Keep his commandments. And with that, we say shalom. 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 Daniel of Israel United in Christ. Please subscribe to our YouTube channels. Stay up to date with our latest events, music, and classroom lessons. IUIC plans to continue visiting different countries where this gospel has not been preached before. IUIC needs your help in pushing this truth. So join us, subscribe to our Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, and podcasts, and stay up to date with us. For more information, please visit www.israelunite.org.